By the early 1960s, the Cold War had moved into the stratosphere. The United States needed an aircraft that could outrun every interceptor and outclimb every missile. The result was Lockheed's SR-71 that was powered by a new class of engine, the Pratt and Whitney J-58. Across the Iron Curtain, the Soviet Union responded to rumors of America's Mach 3 spy plane by developing the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-25. It was built around the Tumansky R-15B 300 engine. This was one of the most powerful turbojets ever flown. Both designs were driven by the same problem that air at Mach 3 moves so fast it can melt metal and choke engines. The question was how to control that air and not just withstand it. The SR-71 and MiG-25 approached high-speed flight from opposite philosophies. The SR-71 treated speed as a system. Everything like its titanium skin and engine spikes were built for sustained Mach 3 or overcruise at 80,000 feet. Its design turned frictional heat into usable energy. The MiG-25, by contrast, was designed for rapid interception. It did not need to cruise at Mach 3 for long. Instead, it needed to reach that speed fast, then attack and retreat. The Foxbat sacrificed efficiency for brute thrust. So while both could touch Mach 3, the Blackbird lived there. The Foxbat only visited. The SR-71's J-58P4 was a hybrid turbojet ramjet designed to shift its breathing pattern as the aircraft accelerated. At lower speeds, it functioned like a normal turbojet and compressed air mechanically. But above Mach 2.5, bypass ducts redirected around 20% of incoming air directly into the afterburner to convert the engine into a semi-ramjet. In that regime, the J-58 produced over 32,000 pounds of thrust per engine. But more importantly, it became more efficient the faster it went. Most of the thrust came not from the compressor but from the inlet system, where shockwaves pre-compressed the air before combustion. The MiG-25's R-15B-300, by contrast, was a pure turbojet and one of the largest ever built. Each engine produced roughly 22,500 pounds of thrust. Its single-shaft compressor and massive afterburner gave it extraordinary power at high altitude but almost no flexibility. At speeds beyond Mach 2.83, exhaust gas temperatures exceeded safe turbine limits. The J-58 featured a nine-stage axial compressor with bleed valves that optimized airflow across Mach regimes. The R-15B300 used an 11-stage compressor without active bleed control. This increased pressure efficiency at subsonic speeds but risked airflow instability at transonic acceleration. Before we move forward, here's a question for you. What do you think limited engineers from creating variable geometry afterburners to improve efficiency beyond Mach 3, even though both engines used afterburners for thrust at high speeds? Drop your insights into the comments below and we'll get back to it later in the video. At Mach 3, the air entering an engine can exceed 400 degrees Celsius before even touching the flame. That kind of heat can kill combustion or twist turbine blades, in catastrophic conditions, it can also tear engines apart. How each aircraft managed it defined everything that followed. The SR-71's J-58 turned heat into an ally. Eight burner cans mixed compressed air and a thermally stable low-volatility blend JP-7 fuel. This cooled the aircraft first, flowing through hydraulics, electronics, and even the canopy before burning. It resisted heat and recycled it into thrust. The MiG-25's R-15B-300 fought heat head-on. Its annular combustor and T-6 kerosene delivered raw power but overwhelmed its steel-nickel turbines under prolonged stress. Soviet flight manuals were explicit that speeds above Mach 2.83 were to be held for no more than five minutes, or the turbine blades could soften and warp. The J-58's turbine inlet temperature reached roughly 1,100 degrees Celsius and was controlled by internal air cooling channels and titanium alloy blades. The R-15's uncooled steel turbines approached 1,200 degrees Celsius and relied solely on airflow dilution to prevent structural failure. At Mach 3, shockwaves must be positioned perfectly or the engine will stall. The SR-71's inlets were works of art. Each nacelle featured a movable spike that shifted up to 66 centimeters depending on speed and created a series of oblique shockwaves to slow air to subsonic speed before it reached the compressor. 
a digital control system adjusted the spike's position in real time, preventing unstarts which is the violent shockwave collapses that could destabilize the aircraft. The MiG-25 relied on variable ramp inlets that were flat, pivoting plates to deflect airflow and create a similar effect. The system was simpler and manually operated but less precise at extreme speeds. The result was more drag and higher turbulence inside the intake. This was acceptable for short intercept missions but inefficient for sustained flight. The SR-71 used JP-7 fuel that had a flashpoint above 60 degrees Celsius and was designed to withstand extreme compression and heat without detonating prematurely. It required triethylborone as an ignition catalyst. This is an exotic chemical that ignited on contact with air and produced the Blackbird's signature green flash at engine start. The result was unmatched endurance. The SR-71 could fly over 5,400 kilometers without refueling, and with tanker support, it could reach any point on Earth. The MiG-25, meanwhile, used standard TS-1 aviation kerosene that was cheaper and more readily available across Soviet air bases. It burned fast. At maximum thrust, both engines could consume nearly six tons of fuel in minutes. That limited its range to around 1,200 kilometers, with high-speed sprints lasting no more than a few minutes. Every second at Mach 3 is a thermal test. The SR-71 structure was 92% titanium, allowing it to absorb skin temperatures above 450 degrees Celsius without deformation. The J-58 nacelles were wrapped in titanium panels that expanded during flight, sealing gaps that leaked fuel on the ground. The MiG-25 was limited by the scarcity of titanium in the Soviet Union and made from nickel-steel alloy. It could endure surface temperatures around 300 degrees Celsius for short periods. However, its weight and thermal limits prevented continuous operation in that regime. This material choice shaped each engine's lifespan. The J-58 could run for 400 hours between overhauls, while the R-15 averaged around 150 to 200 hours, depending on mission profiles. If you're enjoying the video so far, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And let us know what you'd like to see here next. We love hearing what you'd like us to create. At Mach 3, even a fraction of a second's error in airflow or fuel control can destroy an engine. The SR-71 and MiG-25 approach this challenge in completely different ways. The SR-71's J-58 engines were managed by an automated digital automatic flight and inlet control system. It continuously adjusted the position of inlet spikes, bleed valves, and managed fuel flow to stabilize shockwaves. This maintained perfect air compression at every altitude and speed. Automation allowed the Blackbird to transition smoothly through Mach ranges that would destabilize most aircraft and minimize pilot workload while maximizing precision. The MiG-25's R-15B300 relied entirely on manual control. Pilots adjusted throttle and inlet ramp angles by hand and responded to engine pressure ratios and temperature readings in real time. The system was simple and reliable, but it demanded skill. A single incorrect throttle movement could cause compressor stall or flameout. Why does durability matter? Engine longevity was a reflection of mission purpose. The SR-71's engines were part of a tightly integrated maintenance system. After every mission, technicians inspected each J-58 using boroscope tools to check turbine wear and oil degradation. Despite the complexity, its reliability was exceptional. NASA data showed minimal erosion, even after multiple high Mach flights. The MiG-25's R-15 engines were simpler and cheaper to replace. Soviet doctrine favored quantity and readiness. If an engine wore out, it was swapped. Crews could service or replace both engines in hours. The Foxbat simplicity made it practical for widespread deployment, even if it lacked longevity. The SR-71's J-58 remains the only operational jet engine certified for sustained flight beyond Mach 3. No other aircraft has matched its combination of speed, endurance, and also control. The MiG-25's R-15, while limited in longevity, fulfilled its purpose completely. It forced NATO to develop faster interceptors and reconnaissance aircraft. Its design has influenced the MiG-31 Foxhound, which replaced steel with titanium and introduced far more advanced D-30 F-6 engines capable of Mach 2.5 crews. Both engines defined their eras in their own individual ways. 
one proving that precision could conquer heat, the other proving that simplicity could defy it. About that question from earlier, variable geometry afterburners were limited by materials and control precision. Even thermal stress played a role. At Mach 3, moving components in 1,500 degrees Celsius exhaust would fail quickly. So, there we have it. Two machines, two philosophies united on the same frontier of fire and flight. If you enjoyed diving into the science behind the blackbird and the fox bat, hit like, subscribe, and tell us which engine do you think represents the true peak of human engineering. High above the clouds, two bombers shaped the future of air power. The B-2 Spirit, a ghost from the Cold War, and the B-21 Raider, America's newest shadow in the sky. Their wings may look alike, but the truth is hidden under the surface. The way they breathe, burn fuel, and hide heat reveals how war itself has evolved. The B-2's engines were built for a world of radar towers and dogfights. Despite the design of the B-21 remaining a mystery, it's rumored to be built for satellites, cyber warfare, and a battlefield that never sleeps. In the late 1980s, American engineers were tasked with the responsibility to build an aircraft that could strike defended targets deep into Soviet territory and escape unseen. That's how the B-2 Spirit was born. The design was a flying wing that minimized radar returns, and its engines were buried inside the airframe. The Spirit soon became a symbol of invisible power. It was a machine tailored for the two superpowers of the world, staring each other down. More than three decades later, the B-21 Raider entered the picture, and it reflected a very different world. Built in the 2020s, it faces not one rival, but many. It had to combat satellites, infrared sensors, and long-range missiles alike. Engineers knew they had to design an aircraft for adaptability and not just brute force. They made sure the B-21 was capable of flying more often and needed less maintenance. Most of all, it had to remain undetectable against technologies that didn't even exist when the B-2 was conceived. To achieve its mission, the B-2 relied on four General Electric F-118GE 100 engines. Each produced about 17,300 pounds of thrust and together gave the bomber nearly 70,000 pounds. They were hidden deep within the wing roots and used long S-shaped ducts to shield the fan blades from radar. The engines were chosen for how quietly and steadily they could push the aircraft across oceans. By suppressing exhaust heat and reducing noise, the Spirit could cruise more than 6,000 miles without refueling while staying under the radar. The B-21 takes that same idea but strips away the complexity. Instead of four smaller engines, it is believed to rely on two Pratt and Whitney F-135 derivatives, which is the same engine family that drives the F-35 fighter. Each may deliver around 28,000 pounds of thrust, enough that two can do the work of four. But the real magic lies in how they are managed. Where the Spirit relied on ductwork and fragile coatings, the Raider's engines use advanced composites and digital monitoring. The shift to a digital foundation was important because it was driven by the reality that modern threats like hypersonic missiles and space-based infrared sensors react faster than ever. Before we move forward, we have a question for you. With the B-21's engines likely fewer in number but more advanced in design, has the US traded redundancy for efficiency? Is the future about fewer, smarter engines rather than more simpler ones? Share your thoughts in the comments below. On paper, comparing thrust tells only part of the story. Four F-118s together gave the B-2 about 69,200 pounds of thrust. Two F-135 derivatives could give the B-21 more than 55,000 pounds. That seems less, but the Raider is designed to be smaller, lighter, and more efficient. The Spirit relied on 1980s materials and coatings that required massive cooling and frequent reapplication of radar-absorbing paint. Its engines were innovative but lacked the smart diagnostics and fuel control of today's systems. The Raider flips that. Its F-118-based engines use digital full-authority engine controls that monitor temperature, airflow, and vibration hundreds of times per second. They communicate constantly with onboard systems to keep the aircraft's heat signature as low as possible. Where the B-2 depended on ductwork to hide heat, the B-21 depends on intelligent regulation of combustion itself. For stealth aircraft, heat is just as dangerous as radar reflections. Infrared-guided missiles can lock onto exhaust plumes instantly. The B-2's F-118 solved this by burying exhaust deep inside the wing and mixing cooler bypass air before it exited. 
It worked, but the trade-off was enormous complexities in the ducting system, which increased weight and maintenance. The B-21's engines took this concept further. By starting with the F-135's higher bypass ratio and efficiency, engineers reduce overall exhaust temperatures at the source. The Raider has shallower intakes with curved inlets that completely shield engine faces from radar. Exhaust nozzles are flattened, stretched wide, and blended into the wing contour. This spreads the hot gases over a larger surface, cooling them faster before they leave the aircraft. Infrared stealth has become even more critical in recent decades. Modern satellites scan whole battlefields in multiple infrared bands. The Raider's engines aim to confuse those sensors by lowering exhaust contrast against background temperatures. The thing is, they know the aircraft can't be invisible forever, but it's about buying the seconds needed to pass through defenses unnoticed. If you like this video so far, make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel. And let us know in the comments which one you think matters more in modern warfare, raw thrust like the B-2, or digital efficiency like the B-21. The B-2 carries about 167,000 pounds of fuel, giving it a range of over 6,000 miles unrefueled. With aerial refueling, it can reach anywhere on the planet. But its engines burn fuel at Cold War rates and missions often require extensive support. The B-21 is designed with endurance in mind. Estimates suggest internal fuel loads of around 120,000 pounds, yet thanks to the efficiency of its F-135 derivatives and lighter airframe, its effective range may match or exceed the B-2. This matters most in the Indo-Pacific battlefield. Covering vast ocean distances requires tankers to operate close to hostile zones where they are exposed to long-range missiles. If the B-21 can strike with fewer refuelings, it reduces cost and operational risk because the bomber has a much higher chance of slipping in and out unseen. The B-2's engines demanded constant attention. Stealth coatings degraded quickly and engine access required time-consuming procedures. The Spirit Fleet spends far more time on the ground being serviced than in the air. At times, each flight hour required more than 100 hours of maintenance. But the B-21's engines are built for a new philosophy that is focused on ease of maintenance. Pratt and Whitney designed the Raiders' power plants with modular components, meaning units can be swapped quickly without removing entire assemblies. Built-in diagnostics allow crews to detect issues before they cause failures. This means less downtime and lower costs. Noise might seem irrelevant for bombers, but in modern warfare, even acoustic signatures matter. The B-2's four F-118s produce a distinct subsonic rumble detectable by some surveillance systems. The Raider's F-135-based engines are quieter and optimized to suppress infrared and radar signatures as well as acoustic ones. Engineers use advanced fans and bypass designs to reduce how sound carries, adding another layer to survivability. In a battle space increasingly filled with sensors of every type, silence can be as important as invisibility. The B-2 Spirit's engines were Cold War machines that were born in a time when survival meant penetrating the Soviet Union once and making sure to strike hard before returning home. Its F-118s were steady workhorses wrapped in radical stealth design. They symbolized brute endurance hidden under a cloak. The B-21 Raider's engines are digital age creations. They represent a shift toward efficiency and networked warfare. Instead of focusing on one strike, the Raider is meant to fly regularly, adapt to multiple missions, and remain stealthy without endless maintenance. When you line them side by side, the differences in engines reveal the differences in philosophy. The B-2 Spirit has four engines and modest thrust. It is focused on hiding heat and sound with clever ducting. The aircraft requires high maintenance, but definitely remains unmatched in its era. On the other hand, the B-21 Raider likely has two engines, high thrust, and it is digitally controlled. Additionally, it is optimized for stealth with efficiency. You can look at the model and see that it has been built for reliability and frequent missions. One represents the peak of 20th century stealth. The other represents the dawn of 21st century adaptability. While the B-2 Spirit's engines proved that stealth could work on a massive scale, the B-21 Raider's engines proved that stealth can evolve into something smarter and more enduring. Which philosophy do you think defines the future of air power, the Spirit or the Raider? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed exploring these hidden differences, hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned. We'll be back with more deep dives into the secret world of legendary aircraft engines.